Spring 1978, and the school that Doug Digby bestrode like a colossus marked his passing. But Miss Geraldine Titley, who once had loved him, came to bury Digby, not to praise him. Today we mourn Mr. Douglas Digby, our popular peer master. Sadly fallen in the line of duty, cut down in his prime. He shall not grow old, as we that are left to grow old. Are you chewing grommet? See me. As a mark of respect, and until we can get the gym floor replanked, all PE lessons are suspended. Yes! Mr Grimley, take that boy's name. I didn't see who it was, sir. It was your brother. On the brighter side, we welcome Miss Titley back at long last. Yeah. And we greet Mr Treblecock, our new woodwork master. Treble Co, headmaster. I stand corrected, Mr Treble Co. <laughs> Mr. Grimley, take your brother's name again. Life's like a violin concerto, Geraldine. You have been through a fast and furious, emotionally punishing, and negro. What you surely need now is the adagio. A calm, slow passage. No, oh, no, Gordon. I've been through too much to settle for a bit of quiet fiddling. Now, what I want now is a big, noisy crescendo. Let me. <laughs> oh, my shoulder. Is there a problem? My classroom door seems to be jammed. If the dog might get a sight of the rabbit. Oh, come on. If I can't shift it. Wonderful thing, Wood. Like a woman, in a way, responds to the right touch. If there's anything else, I'm just down the corridor. That wasn't him. It was me. I must have freed it when I shoulder charged it. It's not every man that can open a door a woman wants to go through. Some men just blunder about the framework. Gentlemen, let us get to know one another. That is my name. <laughs> Dave to my friends, but to you lot, Sir or Mr. Treblecoat. What about that CK then? Yeah, it looks like uh, Mr. Treblecock to me. <laughs> and yeah, it's pronounced Trebleco. It's an ancient Cornish name. The CK is silent. Yes, yes, like the P in Bath. Over the years, gentlemen, I've heard them all. I've been called Mr. Treble Chance, Mr. Triple Prong, Mr. Three Decker, at least I think it was Decker, Mr. Treble Clack, Mr. Trouble Cow, Mr. Terrible Clock. A girlfriend of mine once told me her favourite movie was Alfred Hitchcock's Psychoc. So, if you can find any new variations, you will surprise, possibly even amuse me. Any offers? Then to work. Each of you is going to construct a pencil case. Oh, Mr. Trevelco, I wanted to thank you properly. Just to say that everything seems to be in working order now, thanks to you. It's possible the aperture had shrunk slightly through lack of use. Yes, that could be it. Well, thanks again. Cool, she fancies you. You're all right there. No, you never know for sure. She could turn out to be a co-teaser. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, lad. Grimly, isn't it? I'm impressed. Hi, Dave. I'm afraid you'll find us dull company at the moment. We're all still grieving Douglas. Especially me, of course. Well, the funeral will cheer us up. That's what they're for. Everything sorted, is it? Oh, anything but. All right, Douglas has well left everything to me. Apart from his whistle, the World Cup Master Referee non pareil peerless thunderer. He wanted me to have that. But I wish he hadn't left the funeral arrangements to me as well. There's so many decisions. 
I know just what you mean. A knife and fork do, or a finger buffet. In my view, when you're shepherding a valued colleague into the great beyond, you want more than a dinky pie and a sausage roll. Well, Zoe left everything he had to me. He didn't leave any actual money. The funerals these days are so expensive. You wouldn't believe the cost of coffins. If I might suggest, Ed Master, my lads could help there. Attention, gentlemen. As of now, your individual pencil case project goes on the back burner. Yeah, great! Instead, a team effort. You will be constructing a coffin. A coffin? What's in it for us? The late Doug Digby. And possibly a few quid, too. <laughs> I knew it would be no good. For a start, it's too big. <gasps> oh, oh. That's what I thought. But no, deceptively snug. Mr Holder, what are you doing in Doug's coffin? I'm testing it. As a member of my staff, Doug Larson's conditions of employment, or in this case, entombment, a top priority. It's lovely wood. It's fine as Sherwood sure Oak, according to Mr Treblecoe. He says it'll last a lifetime. Which is the one thing it doesn't need to do. And what's this separate part down this end? Well, that puzzled me. Ah, Mr Treblecoe. We're a bit baffled. What's this section at the end here? Ah, um, well, it's a good question, Headmaster. I think I know. Of course, I might be way off beam. But is it a nod towards the Viking tradition? The dead hero carries his treasured possessions with him to Valhalla? That's spot on. I couldn't have explained it better myself. His treasured possessions? Well, his photos of Chopper Harris and Bobby Moore can go, then. Well, his whistle can't. No, I'm sorry. And that must be the lid. Yeah. Slide out to open, slide in to close. Oh, Dave. You and the boys have done wonders. I'm very grateful. My pleasure and privilege, Geraldine. It's beautiful. Yes, it is beautiful. In a way, it's a shame to bury it. We lament the passing of our dear friend and colleague, Douglas Digby. As a motivator, a driving force, in the gymnasium, he was without peer. Whether we were on the ropes or on the wall bars. Nobody who passed through his class could forget how Doug Digby could drive you up the wall. And now he's gone to a challenging new appointment. There'll be a new PE instructor in heaven tonight. And if I know Doug Digby, the angels will be doing star jumps the hard way. Amen. Amen. And as we say goodbye to Douglas, we listen to his all-time favourite song. Yes, Douglas did have a deep and thoughtful side to his nature when he wanted. as if he's telling us he doesn't want to go. Oh, the will to live even after he's dead. Well, then again, Treble Co has simply Treble Coed it up. I knew he'd get it wrong. Oh, look. He's getting his tool out. Pardon? Wait a minute. Why oh, didn't I realise it before? That's not a coffin at all. Oh, I think Dave Treble Co knows more about coffins than you do. Geraldine, look at it. That is a pencil case. Doug Digby is being buried in a pencil case. Like a... like a budgie. Or a pet hamster. Oh, Gordon. You're overwrought. Oh, I realise now you cared more about Doug than you'd like to admit. It's right now. Well done, Dave. Goodbye, Douglas. Hello the rest of my life. In that case, no, forget it. No, what?
course. I was going to say, let me take you out to dinner tonight. I accept. Thank you, Gordon. From now on in my life, nothing's too soon. Nothing. Tonight, Geraldine is mine. It's ordained. It's destiny. How'd you work that out? The princess was awakened from her long sleep. Oh. And who slew the monster and thereby rescued the maiden? I did. I am now embedded deep in Geraldine's subconscious as the hero. And the hero's reward is the maiden's treasure. Well, if you're right... I am. Then you'd best take precautions. You mean? Yeah. Pour plenty of drink down there. I don't need to stoop to that kind of low subterfuge. Suit yourself. But round here the saint never fails. During the evening, I'd like you to keep the wine coming. Uh, keep the bottles coming. Keep filling the glasses up. Si, sí, sir, I understand. Molto vino, plenty wine. Round here the saint never fail. This is a very nice wine, house red. Uh, no, uh, I was thinking, have you any of that, uh, what's that famous Italian wine, the Lambretta? We're out of the Lambretta, also the Vespa. And I regret to say last year's harvest of the Lamborghini, it was wiped out in a storm. But this is a very nice wine, sir. You want to try? Grazie. Very good. Oh, uh, yes, that's quite acceptable, really. It's uh, challenging uh, without being in any way bellicose. <laughs> See, so many of our patrons here in Dudley, they say exactly that, huh? <sighs> Sorry, I'm late. No, no, I expect I was early. <laughs> you look wonderful. Like a beautiful princess that has wakened from a dream. And you know, Geraldine, for me, this is like a dream in a way. Being here, soft lights, sweet music, the night before us, just we two. Two? Well, actually, Gordon... You will not believe who's just walked in here. Of all the spaghetti joints in all the world, he has to walk into this one. Dave Trebleco. I invited him to join us. Oh, Geraldine, I thought this was going to be us. You and me. Oh, Gordon, I thought it was the friendly thing to do. He's new to the town, new to the school. I thought it would help him to feel one of us. And I know which one of us it'll be. Gordon, this is very decent of you, Squire. Geraldine told me you were a nice guy, really. Waiter! We need another glass. Now, go on. Close your eyes and open your mouth. <laughs> I've been caught like that before. <laughs> Still, I'll take the chance. Mmm. I like it. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Something wrong with your spaghetti, sir? Mm. I've lost my oh, appetite. You're used to the English spaghetti, maybe. The oops. Out to the tin until the toast, no? No. Not all of us are goths and vandals. Not for me, Squire. I'm driving. It's one of the things I do best when I'm sober. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I'm having a lovely time. It was really nice of you to invite us out like this. Yeah, much appreciated. <laughs> oh! A toast to the future and new beginnings. Or in other words, bottoms up. <laughs> <laughs> it's not right. Should see you home, Geraldine. Him, me. Gordon, you're home now. 
sleep tight, no no. Should see you home. Save. I'll see she gets home, Squire. Never worry on that score. Night night. You try to take advantage, swine. Should have been me. All that wine she's drunk never fails. <laughs> Here we are then. So it's good night then. Yeah. See you in the staff room. Arriva Dirci. Oh Dave. This is Andy Fairweather. And before you start, we're out of ketchup. Darren, get down here! Now ketchup. And I'm that worried about our Gordon. He ain't been home, his bed's not been slept in. No ketchup? Darren says he was out with a woman. Darren, yours is on the table. I hope he ain't done nothing silly. No ketchup? You reckon he was on a dead set last night? Must have been right. Oh, Mama Gordon's here. Oh, oh, thank God, thank God. Oh, Gordon's here, but I'm safe and sound. You don't need to worry. No ketchup! Oh, he spewed his ring up by the state of the carpet. Oh, the grimly curse. Happiest days of your life. Night out, get rat ass, spew your ring. Next morning, feel like hamsters have crept in your mouth. Ooh. Magic. Oh, oh, I'm gonna be sick again. Ooh. He must have eaten something. Monkey pie, the chippy. Monkey pie, he's bladdered, you silly crow. About two on. Oh, Gordon, I like that. He's not one for the drink. <laughs> Make the best of it here, Gordon. Your good times don't last forever. Next thing you're stuck with a stupid old bag who can't even remember to get a bottle of ketchup in. <laughs> I'm getting nothing. Doug Digby used to get a right blast out of this. Mind you, he had been on a course for it. 39, 40. Thank you, Neville. Is it convenient, Mr. Alder? Mrs. Grimley, yes, come in. What can I do for you? It's our Gordon. He went off to school without having any breakfast this morning, so I just brought him in some sandwiches. Only pilchard. Nothing special. Can't afford nothing special. Money's a bit tight in our house these days. Well, maybe there's something I can do about that. First gentlemen, a little bonus in kind from the off license. Yay! Coffin nails seem somehow appropriate. And these to wet your whistles and I hope your appetite for further enterprises. You are half of the cash, £15. Share that between you and the class. All right, so I should get more than them. It was my mum's wardrobe, wore it? Don't be greedy, Gromit, it'll even itself out. I'm sure all these other gentlemen's mothers have wardrobes too, right? Are we doing more projects then, sir? We are. There's a growing market for naff carpentry, the sort of stuff churned out by third world underprivileged peasants. So it's right up your street. <laughs> Miss Titley. Mr. Tribbleco, I have a small problem which requires the expert touch. Mine, Miss Titley. If you'd be so kind. I have a picture I want hanging in the flat and I'm just hopeless at anything like that. You know, knocking something in. I was wondering if you could spare a moment this evening. Of course. My pleasure. About eight o'clock, then. Sir, if you're busy, I can go. No, Gromit. No use sending a lad. This is a man's errand. Stop that banging and clattering, you little monster. Look, we... Oh, it's you. You blew it last night, didn't you? I told you it was fairy stories, all that stuff about Miss Titney gonna put out for you. It'll be different next time. Treble Cock might be there. He's been there already, if you ask me. And he'll be there again tonight. She came in woodwork and right into her place. Said he could put something up for her. What's this rabbit food? It's good for you. You get enough chips at home. Mum, what are you doing? You can't be a dinner lady, not here. Why not? It ain't too late to start a career. Anyway, I'm a catering auxiliary, that's what I am. Now move along, there's kids here one serving. Grub's bad enough at home. No school dinners are going to be horrible too. First Geraldine, now Mum. Hamlet was right. Oh, frailty, thy name is woman. Shh. 
cup of tea, Mr. Alder. Oh, thank you. Now get your jacket off. Pardon? Got a button missing, are you? You give it here. You see, that tells me that ain't nobody taking care of you. No. It's just one of the things you miss. It's a lonely life on your own. Can be lonely when you're married as well. My Baz, Mr. Grimley, he ain't what he was. In fact, if you ask me, he ain't all there. And I'll just say this. When there's a slate loose on the roof, it starts going all mouldy in the bedroom. You're early. Oh, go on. Just thought I'd pop round to lend a hand. <laughs> I know what it's like moving into a new place. So much to do. No, you don't. You've never had your own place. You've always lived at home with your mum to do everything for you. Ah, but inside I do, Geraldine. I mean, I roam free in spirit. And really, you know, you ought to ring first instead of just dropping by without any warning. Yes, well, now that I am here, surely there must be something I can... Oh, uh, <laughs> I expect you want this picture hanging. <laughs> Look, Gordon, I know you're trying to help, but you're not very good with your hands. And... I am. Now, how about here? <laughs> Interesting tonal values, by the way. It's the wrong way up. Ah, yes, well, the thing about these abstracts is there isn't necessarily a right way or a wrong way up. It's a landscape, Gordon. Yes, well, I'll just hang it for you. <laughs> Dave, I'm afraid Gordon Grimley's here insisting on hanging that painting for me. Fine, your problem solved then. But do we have to be here as well? Cars outside, spin in the country, an old world pub maybe. Sounds lovely. I'll get my coat. That looks fine to me. I've just discovered something about your plumbing. Some of the pipes are very badly placed. Geraldine, do you think you could find the stopcock? The stopcock, Geraldine, if you could just put your hand on it. So, as spring blossomed into summer, Geraldine. Gordon was left like the little Dutch boy, with his finger in the dark. But the dam was close to bursting. And more Grimleys here on ITV3 tomorrow night. Next, though, we're heading across the pond for stateside drama in L.A. Law.